Hey yo, it's Brian here. Today we're gonna be talking about the San Francisco 49ers. As always, not doing a top three video. This time doing another podcast style video for you guys. Not gonna be doing any captions for this. This might be kind of a long video, so hope you guys do bear with me. A lot of stuff going on for tomorrow training camp. Just want to talk about my final thoughts on what I think about it. Some extra news, updates, last minute stuff. Depth chart hasn't come out yet. I think it's coming out tomorrow when they do start training camp. So maybe I'll talk about that tomorrow on a Saturday. So yeah, it should be a fun time. Hope you guys are excited. Football is unofficially coming back for everyone in the NFL. I can't wait to see what goes on. Preseason is coming up in a week or two, I think, or whatever, a couple of weeks. So I don't know personally but yeah i mean just a lot of things going on and then by the time you know it it's september regular season and that's when the wins and losses count so yeah gonna be talking about that talk about trading camp before i get the video started please like and subscribe to support my channel that would definitely help me out a lot click that bell notification to get notified of future videos share the channel share this video with fellow nine faithfuls that would be much helpful getting very close to 2,000 subscribers so if you guys could just help me a little bit share this content with fellow nine faithfuls or just any football fans in general that would be amazing thank you guys so much let's get this video started last minute thoughts on training camp prior to tomorrow all right so it's going to happen tomorrow everybody i think in the 49ers organization from both rookies and veterans are reporting today for training camp that's amazing to hear injury updates i got a couple off the top of my head i'm not really looking at notes right now jimmy garoppolo he's a full go kwan alexander he looks like a full go for the most part they're probably going to be easing him into the starting lineup easing him into playing football again because he tore his acl last year as you all probably know by now so that's good news right there he's not on the pup list any of these guys that i mentioned they're not on the pup list they're going to be pretty much ready by week one another player jason Verrett, coming off a serious achilles injury last year actually during his time with the chargers last year he tore his acl on the first day of training camp which is very unfortunate that sucks uh they didn't even get a chance to play anything any preseason or any regular season downs but hopefully everything goes out well for him which i think it will i think he'll take it easy definitely especially tearing your achilles that is just a very serious injury and a lot of people do not come back from that especially basketball players you look at kobe bryant he didn't really come back to his Kobe Bryant form Kevin Durant I don't know if he's going to be coming back to Kevin Durant which I don't think he will I think he'll still be a very good player but you're talking about the Kevin Durant from like a year or two ago when they were winning championships with the Warriors I don't think he's coming back to that form anytime soon well he has Kyrie Irving and DeAndre Jordan to help him out next year but still when you tear your Achilles especially basketball ooh, it's just hard to come back to your full form although Richard Sherman's doing pretty good for coming back from his Achilles injury last year and I think he's going to be even better this year being almost completely healthy so that's good right there yeah I mean those guys they're coming back pretty good um some other things what are some other things to talk about I guess some position battles can go over that one more time running backs I'm really excited to see what's going on with them is it going to be Coleman is it going to be Brita who's going to be the number one running back wide receivers a couple of guys are on the bubble in my eyes right now you got Jordan Matthews Richie James and Kendrick Bourne those three guys I think they're going to be on the roster bubble. They're going to be a last-minute thought for the 53-man roster. You can make a case for each of them. Jordan Matthews, he's a big receiver. Apparently, during OTAs and minicamp, he had a very good rapport with Garoppolo, so that's good right there. Got to have some good chemistry with your franchise quarterback, and if you can do that, then you have a very good chance of making this roster. Kendrick Bourne, he's a red zone threat, although he's made some mistakes, I guess you want to call it. Uh, some people mentioned his mistakes of route running, which is kind of weird, but it is what it is. But yeah, last year, he was the rec leading receiver for the 49ers of all wide receivers. I think he had about almost 500 yards, which is pretty low for a number one receiver i guess you want to call it so you know hoping we can up it up this year we have a lot of great talent coming into this whole wide receiving core we got Debo samuel finally getting signed by the 49ers jalen hurd he's going to be an amazing dude i think for the most part he i think kyle shanahan's going to be using him in many different forms not just as a wide receiver but as a running back because he used to play out in college and also as a tight end so there's just a lot of good things to be excited for uh, for the receiving slash tight end core for the 49ers jimmy garoppolo he should be happy that he has all this talent he's coming back fully healthy like what could go wrong yeah seriously what could go wrong for the 49ers except for injuries also hopefully this training camp period preseason everyone comes healthy for the most part i don't want to hear on the news somebody toward their acl or achilles or something serious like that hopefully everybody takes it easy out there and yeah i mean hopefully the injury gods are very nice to us this year because they he, they haven't been nice to us for the past couple of years but hopefully 2019 with all, everyone that we have it doesn't go too crazy so that's good right there another guy that i want to mention nick bosa i can't wait to see what he does he's going to be fully playing 
practicing tomorrow on a Saturday. I can't wait to see what he does and hear all the reports about him. I'd love to go one of these training camp periods, but unfortunately, I live on the East Coast, and it would be kind of weird to just fly over there just to go to a training camp session and go home and what have you. But hey, I can have an In-N-Out burger. I'm pretty sure if you guys are from Northern or Southern California or just anywhere that has In-N-Out burger like Nevada or Oregon, Texas, Utah, or something like that, In-N-Out burger, one of the greatest fast food places that I've ever been in my life. I think it's better than Five Guys. You know what? I'm going to ask a question to you guys. Do you guys, do you guys like Five Guys or In-N-Out Burger or maybe another different joint like Butter Burger or something like that? I'd like to hear what you have to say in the card section. I'm going to put a poll right here to see what you guys think about each burger place and what you guys like more. So that's just me. I want to do something a little bit different, a little entertainment. I guess you want to call it. T- take a little break from talking about football and what have you. So, uh, But yeah, that's good. All right. What else? What else? What else? Some uh, players that I'm interested in seeing, D4 definitely, free agent pickup, paid him a lot of money this year and next year, so, you know, we want to get our dividends from that guy. I think he's going to make life even better for the footy on the defensive side of the ball as well as Nick Bosa, so there's a lot of things going on. Some players that I'm kind of concerned of on the defensive side of the ball, I would say are Solomon Thomas and Eric Armstead, hopefully those guys, they can show up and show out. Thomas, I'm very high on this year in 2019. He hasn't had the biggest ride in his career for the NFL for the past couple of years. He's been kind of struggling, but hopefully the Niners, they're going to be using him correctly, and hopefully Thomas, he can use his talents as much as possible because I think he has a lot of talent for the 49ers, and he's going to offer a lot for the Niners this year. I expect him to have a very good year for the Niners, and plus we improved the defensive line big time with Bosa and forward, and you got Buckner on the right defensive tackle. So what can go wrong for him? Hopefully everything goes out with him. Armstead, I don't know. Uh... I'm not the biggest fan of his, but hopefully everything goes out well for him. Linebacking core, you got Fred Warder, Kwan Alexander. As I mentioned, he's going to be completely healthy or mostly healthy, I should say, coming back into the starting lineup. I want to see what they're doing with the middle linebacker position. I keep hearing him. He's going to be the top middle linebacker or Fred Warner is going to be the top, top middle linebacker, but I believe it should be Warner that should be the top middle linebacker just because of the fact he's a proven guy. He's been consistent for the most part last year. He's been completely healthy for the most part, although he was knick-knacked just a little bit during... OTAs and slash minicamp, but for the most part, he hasn't had a significant injury that I know of to uh, play with the 49ers, so I expect him to be the starting middle linebacker, and I think Kwan's going to be on the weak side uh, outside linebacker, so you know that that would be my personal rotation right there if I'm Robert Salah. Defensive backs, that is a big question mark for the most part. I think on the defensive side of the ball, that has a lot of concerns, a lot of questioning for this whole side right here. The only consistent guy I can think of is Richard Sherman, and he's not even a young guy anymore. He's like 31, 32 now, and he's still a pretty good cornerback for the most part. Jason Vera, as I mentioned, he's going to be coming back full-time for the 49ers. They're going to be definitely definitely taking it easy on him coming into this training camp session. Akela Witherspoon, he has a lot to prove. Adrian Colbert, he has a lot to prove as well. You got other guys like Tavarius Moore. He's going to be playing this free safety spot, hopefully competing for the starting spot. So, yeah, there's just a lot of question marks outside of Richard Sherman on what's going on, who's going to start opposite to Sherman, and who's going to be the starting safeties for the strong and free safety spots. So, for me personally, as I mentioned, I'm going to be putting Richard Sherman, probably Akella Witherspoon, just because of the fact that he's been healthy for the most part, and I'm pretty sure they want to take it easy on Verrett if... Um, if anything goes on with, with week one. But for me personally, I would have done with Ver- I would have put Verrett on the opposite side of Sherman, but I don't think he's ready to come back completely fully healthy. So you're going to have to put Sherman and Witherspoon yet again for week one like they did last year. Hopefully Witherspoon doesn't get burned or anything like that. Hopefully he's getting a lot of motivation this year. Hopefully he's looking at tape from last year and why he got burned from these games like the Detroit Lions and the Arizona Cardinals. I, he just got to improve big time. Also, Adrian Colbert, I hope he does a big improvement. I'm a big fan of his. 2017, he had an awesome year as a rookie, but 2018, he had a down year, definitely. So hopefully, everything works out with that. Tavares Moore, I'm pretty high on as well. He's going to be playing his natural position at free safety. So that's good right there. Marcel Harris, he had a really good campaign in 2018. Hopefully, that's not like an Adrian Colbert thing where he played a couple of games and had an awesome year for for the second half of 2018. But then next year, he has a sophomore slump. So I'm hoping that he makes a big improvement coming into the season. He looks like a hard hitter. The only thing he needs to be working on is his tackling. Pretty much the whole 49er organization slash team needs to work on their tackling. You got Kwan Alexander. He's not the best tackler. He's been pretty known to miss a lot of tackles, but he's a very talented guy. That's what I feel like with this 49er defense. 
they're I think they're really good, but they're more of a raw talent thing. The thing is, they need to get their chemistry together, in my opinion, to get this whole thing going because they have just immense amount of guys that are talented that've been to the Pro Bowl before, that've been all pros for the most part. So all they need to do is just get it all together. Hopefully, Robert Salah is doing a very good job on getting this team to get in sync and work as a D line, I guess you want to call it, because in my opinion, the defensive line is the most important position on the defensive line. And hopefully those four guys on the front, they're going to do wreak havoc for the 49ers and other opposing quarterbacks for this year. And I expect a big year from them on, on that D line. A lot of people are very high on them. Anybody that knows a thing or two about football knows that this team has a lot of upside. I, I just can't wait to see what they do, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Offensively, I think they're pretty consistent. We, I don't know, Jimmy Garoppolo and what have you, he's a big upside, but then there's a lot of concern for him. Is he going to come back completely healthy for this whole 2019 season? Like, There's just a lot of questions with Garoppolo, but for the most part, I think with the talent around him, he's a talented quarterback himself. Why can't he not have a good season? The only thing that's holding him back is probably his injury, and I hope he doesn't get injured during the season. If he does... Our season is pretty much in question marks, except when Mullins becomes our backup quarterback and he becomes a starter. I think we'll be a little bit in better shape in the backup spot had anything happened to that. And speaking of the quarterback spot, that's going to be an interesting battle. Nick Mullins versus CJ Beathard. I think everyone that has a brain and what have you that knows a thing or two about football, I'm going to say Nick Mullins is going to be the backup quarterback to Garoppolo. But Shanahan, I think he's still in love with Beathard some way, shape, or form. So he'll probably try to insert him into the backup spot, but I hope Shanahan comes to his senses and just picks Mullins as the backup man, and better he could be the third quarterback, or they can cut him or whatever, but I think for the most part, San Francisco, they're going to keep three quarterbacks because last year, it was a great idea to keep three quarterbacks because all three or two of them got hurt for the most part. Jimmy Garoppolo tore his ACL last year. CJ Beathard, he didn't really have the best campaign of his life in 2018. Also, he I think he had a, like a minor injury, and then Mullins took over in the game against the Oakland Raiders on Thursday Night Football and never looked back. So, you know, there's a lot of question marks within the backup spot for the quarterback, but we'll see what happens. But for me personally, I would go with Garoppolo, Mullins, and Beathard as the depth chart coming into tomorrow. And, you know, as I said, depth chart's coming out tomorrow. I'll have to see who's going to be the starters, who's going to be on the bench and what have you. And this is not really an official thing. It's an official thing for training camp. But week one, we'll see what happens coming into the uh, end of the preseason before the 53-man roster deadline. I think it's like a week after uh, week four of the preseason to see what the whole 53-man team looks like. So, yeah, just a lot of things going on for the 49ers. I can't wait to have this session going on. I can't, I'm pretty sure you guys are excited to see some football, hear about football again because it's been a pretty drag for this whole summer. I can't believe I made it through this whole summer making five videos a week and all the way now we are finally in the mints of the start of football season for the 100th anniversary of the NFL. That is crazy. 100 years in the NFL. Wow, that is just amazing. Hopefully there's another 100 years for more NFL football because who doesn't love the NFL? I love the NFL with my life. It's amazing talking about it, watching it. It's just a joy to watch it. And without football, really, I don't really have a life, to be honest with you. I mean, I do stuff outside of my life, but football season is really when I get it going. I'm really happy and I get everything, you know, life is fulfilling for the most part with football. And it's funny because I never played football in my life. Any down, organized down, uh, like high school or middle school or anything like that. Just, I never played football in my life uh, in the school level or in the professional level. So, you know, it's pretty cool to have a cool fan base with you guys and Niner Faithful just talking about football. And I, I think it's a privilege to be with you guys in San Francisco, although I don't even live in San Francisco. So that's the beauty of YouTube. That's the beauty of talking about this or blogging about this. I don't know what, I don't know what you guys want to call YouTube, but it, it's amazing. I want to thank you guys so much for everything you guys done for me, from commenting to sharing to liking it to subscribing all that uh, appreciate all you guys it means a lot so yeah pretty much my final thoughts for training camp offensively i can't wait to see what goes on with garoppolo and company a lot of competition within it defensively raw talent i think they're going to be fantastic for 2019 but can they get it all together can they get work on the chemistry that's the biggest question for the defensive side of the ball special teams robbie gold he's coming back for the 49ers there's been He's coming back from the 49ers from his bad blood, I guess you want to call it. Almost getting traded to the Bears. I don't even think they were going to trade him anyways. But it was just some bad blood early on. But they finally signed a two- to four-year deal 
with the 49ers. So that's amazing right there. Yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. Please let me know any final thoughts for training camp before tomorrow. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. If you guys like this, please like and subscribe to support my channel. That would definitely help me a lot. I will be catching you guys up tomorrow on a Saturday, probably reporting on the first day of training camp. I'll see y'all then. Bye, guys. Love y'all. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Go Niners all day.